Hello and welcome to The Developer Show. Let's start with the TLDR. Zushi is a new open source cross-platform game written in C++ that demonstrates how to build games using a suite of newly released and updated open source game technologies from Google. Click the link below in the description to check out the six recently updated open source tools you can use in your game. Jason Sanmia is the TL for Zushi and is on the show today to tell us more. Great to be here, Timothy. Happy birthday, go! <laughs> You've just turned six, and you have over 780 contributors with 30,000 commits in 22 repositories. Thank you to everyone in the open source community who've made Go what it is today. Create virtual machines with exactly the amount of power and memory you need using custom machine types on the Google Cloud platform. No more rounding up to a power of two and wasting money on unused resources. A bunch of network performance and flexibility improvements have recently come to the Google Cloud Platform, including the general availability of HTTPS load balancing, segmenting your IP space with sub-networks, dynamic routing on Cloud Router for seamless connectivity with no traffic disruption, and the ability to use Akamai as a CDN interconnect provider. 30% of all smartphone sales worldwide happened in the last three months of the year, and ad impressions spiked by nearly 30% between October and January. This makes January an excellent time to promote your app. Check out the infographic linked below in the description for more. Okay, so this next part isn't exactly developer related, but if you love Star Wars, check out google.com slash Star Wars to add a little light side or a little dark side to your Google experience. Find out how Fablic improved signups by 30% and increased retention by 20% using Material Design and Android Studio. The video is linked in the description below. App builds and deployment are both faster with Android Studio 2.0. The new version features Instant Run, a feature that will dramatically improve your development workflow. More on this later in the show as I get the inside scoop from product manager Stephanie Cuthbertson. Speaking of Android, the Android Dev Summit has wrapped. We had a great time meeting developers and talking about all things Android. And we've got a few more clips to play from the event, as well as Joanna Smith on the show today to, talk, to share more about what went down at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. Hi. All that and more today on The Developer Show. OK, so the Android Dev Summit has wrapped. Let's actually start with a clip to see what it was like on the ground. Hey everybody, I'm here with Chet Haas, leads the Android UI Toolkit team. We talked about you know, some of the overview information, then a deep dive on memory. So what we wanted to do this time was talk about some of the, the higher level concepts that you need to keep in mind um, so that you understand the context that you're developing in. I think what developers don't think about is that, that notifications are the first place often the users come into their phone. And that's your opportunity to build trust. Uh, to deliver information that they need and they can act upon. So that's what it felt like to be on the ground at Android Dev Summit this year at the Computer History Museum here in Mountain View, California. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I've realized about conferences, and I, I think we share this philosophy, is that uh, the sessions are great. And by the way, you can see all the sessions uh, playlist linked below with all the links. However, uh, another thing happens at conferences, which is the conversation in the hallways between sessions. I was hoping that, I mean, you were there for the entire conference. I was. You'd give us a little bit of insight about maybe what were the three top conversations happening between developers at the event? So, um, well, obviously the one that I noticed the most were all the questions about Doze and App Standby, because that's what people like to ask me about, which is yes. great. Ask me your questions on Twitter. It's fine. I love Doze mode. It's the hero of Marshmallow. It totally is. It really is the hero of Marshmallow. I never plug my phone in anymore hero. at night. I just let you it doze, doze, it doze with me. Yeah. I like that. Um, so doze mode is clearly a really big topic, and a lot of people have a lot of feelings about it. And I'm happy to hear your feelings, but you're probably wrong to worry. So that's a great conversation. Um, and then, of course, Android Studio 2.0 is a huge moment, because everyone's yes. excited about being able to actually develop without having to wait every five seconds to see, like, what did that change to my layout look at? What did that change look like? What did that change look like? So we're, if we can enable developers to like develop faster, then I think they'll be able to build better apps like m at a much better pace. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. But the other thing that made me really happy was people haven't stopped talking about material design. Like it's still a core part of their development thought now. And like we've managed to take something that people used to hate doing unless you had like a hired designer and make it a core part of their considerations. Like people want beautiful apps that flow really well and I love seeing that. 
Right. And uh, the conversations they have in the hallway, those can continue online. We have a, a developer community. We do. We have time. an Android developer community. We have a lot of specialized communities for things like performance or design. And we know we're all on Twitter. So like our engineers and our Android you know, framework team, they look at the questions on G+. They look at the community. Like, give us a shout out. Let us know what your questions are. And then you know, holler at us at Twitter, too. Great. And we'll put all those links down in the show notes. Tons of links in the description. Tons of links. <laughs> all right. Let's go to an interview I was able to do with Stephanie Cuthbertson just after she gave the keynote about Android Studio 2.0. Hi there, I'm here with Stephanie Cuthbertson. She's a group product manager for Android and of course one of the captains of Android Studio. Android Studio up until now has been about a really strong foundation, but with 2.0 there's a whole bunch of speed improvements across the board. When you look at 2.0 you'll find the emulators change dramatically. The ADB speeds have improved massively. It's now five times faster to push. If you look closely it's actually 34 times faster than it was in the last build of Android <laughs> Studio. We worked really closely with the search team on deep linking mm -hmm. and this is one of my favorite speed improvements because if you think about it as a developer you really want to make your app discoverable yeah but it sometimes takes a long time to read through all the documentation mm -hmm. and figure out how to do that and so one of the things that's magical about IntelliJ is it prompts you in line for how to do things and with deep linking the Android Studio 2.0 will do exactly that I think you probably know what I'm gonna say I think my I favorite do. feature is uh, which is instant run yes is, uh, instant run is just <laughs> so amazing cool. Yeah, I mean, really, what's cool about it is it really changes mobile development, so it's much more like web-style development. Yes. So now you can just make a change and see it refresh more or less instantly, which is very much like doing development in HTML. It's like refreshing the page. Yeah, yeah. When we look at profiling Android apps, we found around 80% of Android apps will build in a minute or less. Mm. And so an app that used to take a minute to build is now going to take about one to two seconds to push incremental changes. <laughs> so that's quite a big change. Yes, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Um, and we were talking a little bit earlier, uh, and I thought it was really fascinating. I was hoping we could share it with everybody out yeah. there about um, how you landed upon sort of this direction, mm. like this feature, yeah. and um, how like the early days of building mm. for it. We got together with a, a crack group of the engineers, some of the most talented engineers in Android Studio, which is a very talented team. Mm -hmm. And our engineering director, Arno Weber, said, look, we're going to make the build 10 times faster. And the team went off over the weekend and came back <laughs> in and showed us a running demo of Instant Run, complete awesome. with hot swapping for code changes and Instant Run for resources. And I remember it was kind of mind-boggling like, at the well, time. Well, now we can do this. Yes. I remember thinking to myself, uh, that's not exactly what I had in mind. That's about 10 times better. So in fact, if you look closely, the build is not 10 times faster. It's uh, roughly 55 times faster. <laughs> we cannot say enough how grateful we are to our community. And you know, Android, it's open source, it's free. And I'd say a lot of, if not all, of the most significant improvements that we've made have come from us using the product ourselves and especially listening to the community's mm -hmm. feedback. So we're very dependent on the community. We're very grateful to the community. And so I think uh, with 2.0 coming out, probably one of the biggest things we want to say is just thank you so much to that whole group of developers. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> and keep the feedback coming. And check out the keynote. It's awesome. Thank cool. you, Steph. And that's all you need to know about Android Studio. OK, let's talk about Zushi. Jason, welcome to the show. Thanks. So first, uh, tell us, what is Zushi in, um, I don't know, 20 words or less? Well, Zushi is a mobile and VR game where you float down a mystic river feeding sushi to animal patrons. Okay. That's 18-ish. That was great. great. So uh, why do we make the game? And uh, people may have heard of FPL. What is FPL? Fun Propulsion Labs, that's my team, is a team here at Google that makes open source, cross-platform, C++ libraries for game developers. So we found that there's a lot of developers out there, the majority in fact, who would prefer to roll their own uh, C++ libraries or use open source libraries rather than lock into a third-party game engine. OK. So you make games so people can make games. That's right. It's a pretty tough job. <laughs> it's a pretty great job. Um, for Zushi in particular, I can you tell us maybe some of your favorite features? Like, for example, VR. There's uh, You can play the cardboard version, or you can play the mobile version. It's the same game. Yeah, that's right. We, we talk to developers, and a big question that they have is, is VR a big enough market? Um, and so our solution was, well, hey, maybe you can develop for both VR and mobile at the same time, the same way that you would develop, say, a PC game and a console game. Mm. Same game, different input schemes, but uh, you can basically develop them both at the same time. And, and they're a little bit different experiences, but 
game-wise, they're the same. So what I like about this whole thing is that you've made the entire game open source, so developers can actually see how you did that development side by side and what you were able to reuse and everything. But even cooler is you built this game, and then you took the APIs out of the game, right? Like you didn't yeah. build an engine and then build a game for your engine. You, you did it the way a developer would do it, right? Yeah, we think the best uh, game tech is tech that comes out of a game. So everything that we package up as an individual library on GitHub was originally part of one of our games that we generalized and made independence of everything else and then posted on GitHub for people to use. And the whole game is open source as well. So you can see the whole game and how everything works together and you can use any of the individual libraries. That's right. Yeah, You don't have to grab the whole game. You don't have to use it as one monolithic thing. You can grab each individual piece and put it in your game. It's um, like they love their developers. Let's move on to the next clip. And this is Joanna's favorite topic. Dose, Dose mode. mode. Ray Domeyer joins us for this week's Who's Doing What Now? I've actually never seen that show. Yeah. But I did read up on dynamic permissions last night. That's basically the only thing I need to think about for Android 6, right? Yeah, that's all. Well, except for Doze mode. Wait, who's doing what now? Don't let this happen to you. I'm Ray Domeyer, and this is Who's Doing What Now? And we all hate being interrupted in the middle of a good nap. When you're asleep, it's more important that your device have battery when you wake up than for every app to be continuously updated. So, if the device is unplugged, stationary and with the screen off for a significant period of time, it enters doze mode. Doze mode conserves battery by restricting network access and deferring jobs, sinks and standard alarms to fall within periodic maintenance windows, or until the user wakes the device by plugging it in, turning on the screen, or picking it up. Until that time, network access will be disabled for all apps. Wake locks are ignored, standard alarm manager alarms are deferred, as are Wi-Fi scans, sync adapters, and the job scheduler. The goal is to optimize battery life by limiting power-intensive operations, so in many cases, you won't have to change anything. But if your app needs to update regularly or more frequently, there are ways to handle that. You can fire alarms while in doze mode using the new set and allow while idle or set exact and allow while idle methods. An alarm set with set alarm clock continue to fire normally, causing the system to exit doze mode shortly before the, those alarms fire. Now, if your app needs a persistent connection to the network to receive messages, you should consider using Google Cloud Messaging or GCM. It lets you support real-time downstream messaging between backend services and apps on Android devices using a single shared persistent connection to the cloud, significantly improving battery performance. GCM is optimized to work with those through the use of high priority GCM messages that let you wake your app to access the network. The Android team optimizing battery life using Doze mode. That's who's doing what now. And that's our show for the day. Let's end with our final question. Panel, if you could add Doze mode to something else in your life, what would it be? Uh, could I just doze through the workday and like still get my paycheck? Nope. Jason. How about my boss? Because that guy's always plugged in. It's really high energy. <laughs> well, you don't need to doze if they're plugged in, right? Like you're only worried when they're unplugged. I'm going to have to check the links afterwards and read more about them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's our show for the day. Thank you for joining us here on The Developer Show. I'm Timothy Jordan, and I'll see you next week. Bye.